Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recyc, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. Today we're taking a look at a very unique and interesting EEG wearable, the Dream 2. But it is so much more than just another EEG wearable. I am blown away by the amount of scientific research behind this product and what it has to offer. So just as some background, around 25% of people experience insomnia during their lifetime, and around 10% experience chronic insomnia. This means they have trouble getting to sleep, staying asleep, feel exhausted during the day. When you think of mental health disorders, so many of the symptoms can be linked in so many different cases back to poor sleep. Low mood, irritability, poor memory, poor concentration, low energy during the day. These all can be directly related to poor sleep and uh, depression and anxiety actually can uh, snowball from having poor sleep. So sleep is so important. And as a clinical psychiatrist, so many times I refer my patients to go get a sleep study in a sleep clinic, but the wait list is insanely long for sleep clinics these days. And they're not even that effective when you look at what's possible. The reason why I say that is you go to a sleep clinic to get a sleep study done. They hook you up with all these uncomfortable uh, measurement devices. Uh, you're in an alien environment, which is their sleep lab. You're expected to lay down in their bed and go to sleep uh, under all this monitoring tools so that they can figure out what exactly is wrong with your sleep. I mean, do you see the problem there? You're in a weird environment hooked up with all these different devices. Wouldn't it be better to have a wearable to take home and uh, lay down in your own bed and actually be comfortable and try to get to sleep like normal and give them more reliable data over multiple nights? I mean, that's the other problem is you only get one night of data in a sleep lab, whereas you want multiple nights of data to get more reliable data, more data actually work from to be able to use to give uh, great advice about what exactly is wrong with the person's sleep and uh, allow them to uh, adjust their sleep patterns over time, which is actually going to be way more effective. So that's why a device like the Dream 2 is such a big deal because uh, you can use this device at home. I mean, imagine having a sleep lab uh, clinic where you had 50 to 100 of these babies rented out to all your different clients and patients and they were uh, using them at home. The data was streaming to a web portal and uh, the clinic could get all that data and use it to great effect to really diagnose sleep problems, uh, and give great advice about how to improve sleep over time and track sleep metrics as they're going through different treatments during the daytime or taking different medications, et cetera. So uh, that's really where this is groundbreaking. And the other thing too that's really exciting about this company is that instead of an individual physician taking a look at uh, all these different measurements separately, uh, you can use AI and deep learning to stream all these metrics into one analysis program and get great metrics out of it. So um, really forward thinking technology here and getting class two medical device FDA approval is really opening huge doors for this company to move forward in doing something like that, establishing sleep clinics all over the country and all over the world. They published a series of papers, most notably matching the gold standard of polysomography, the formalized study of sleep patterns by sleep medical doctors. As a result, it's recently gotten FDA class two medical device approval, which is a big deal. The FDA requires a rigorous review of device performance, labeling requirements, data requirements, post-market surveillance, and other guidance for their approval. Getting to the device itself, there's this beautiful, sleek, compartmentalized packaging that has your headband, charging dock, size adjustments, and instructions all inside. And this is a French company that has kept other countries in mind, supplying different wall outlet adapters as well for the charger. The charger itself is really cool and the headband sits nicely on top of it to charge each day while you are away. It definitely looks good on your nightstand in the bedroom. Now you want to figure out which attachment will get the device nice and snug on your head. I use the small adjuster and uh, you just slip it over your head like so. It's got a nice elastic band you want to make sure this is about in the middle of your forehead and then uh, bringing this part up and just letting the uh, back electrodes kind of sink down into your hair and in the back is, is helpful for adjusting. And again, that elasticity really makes it easy to just put down over your head and it's really soft material and flexible so it can just go right on your head there for sleep. Um, when you take a look at the actual sensors, here we have uh, a 
the only non-sensor on here, which is the bone conduction speaker, which is right in the middle of your forehead. And then you have uh, four EEG frontal electrodes here. You have the uh, pulse oximeter off to the side that uses near infrared light. On the back, you have these uh, rubbery electrodes that uh, will go in between your hair fibers and uh, get the occipital EEG reading. Overall, it's really comfortable to wear. I mean, it just goes right on your head like this. The felt is really soft. It's uh, got nice padding, so it's uh, squishy. The rubber is nice quality, very soft, not brittle. Now, I will have to admit that it took me a little while to get used to wearing this thing at night. Uh, I would put it on and then I, I do tend to mash my head into, a, into the pillow. I guess that was a sleep habit I didn't realize that I had, but it still stayed on my head even though I would do that. And uh, sometimes I'd wake up on my back and just be confused when I woke up because I was like, oh, what's on my head? And then I would remember that I was wearing the thing. But over the course of night after night, I got more and more used to it and I stopped waking up in the middle of the night and being like, well, what's on my head? And then remembering that it was on my head, it was like I would wake up and I would just go back to sleep. I wouldn't even think about it. So, uh, and definitely over time, uh, those minor inconveniences became even smaller because I, I wasn't worried about having it on my head and it definitely would beat having a full-scale polysomnography test for insomnia, I can tell you that much. All right, so taking a look at the software, the app has a very attractive color scheme that keeps pace to the vibrant pink of the logo. It's very well organized. You can navigate through intuitively. You can see here, nights of sleep that I've already logged for the assessment stage. Let's click one of these real quick. It was actually one of my best nights of sleep out of the assessment stage. Usually I have a couple of awakenings, but here I only had one awakening for about two minutes. And whoa, I fell asleep in 10 minutes. I must have been tired that night. 96% is a really good number for sleep efficiency, which is the amount of time that you're actually asleep while in bed for the night. So since this was a good night of sleep for me, I'll go ahead and mark great on the subjective parameters here. Now getting into the really cool technical data, I should make a point this data is really more accurate than a sleep tracker ring or a watch because the EEG from the headband sensors is direct observation of what's going on in the brain during sleep. The sleep stages here are divided into light, deep, and REM. Light sleep would be more in the alpha EEG range while deep is diving into the theta delta range of EEG and REM is the dreaming state and has more theta and beta frequencies. You can actually see here on the graph that my night starts off with more deep sleep and then transitions gradually to higher and higher percentage of REM as the night progresses. And this is exactly what we'd expect from a healthy night of sleep. As a side note, there's a lot of science behind how substances like alcohol or disorders like depression affect this sleep architecture resulting in abnormal REM patterns that leave you feeling less well rested during the day. You can actually scroll along here and see your heart rate, breathing rate, and actually what position you were in bed, which is pretty funny to look at. Note to you, all you conspiracy theorists out there that the data comes from the accelerometer, not satellite imaging or anything invasive like that. Uh, you can click the individual sleep stages and see the relative duration and percentages of the night. Then they have these interpretations of the night and teach you all about what the different numbers mean and how you compare to the general population. Clicking here on this one, you can see that I had a less restful night with four awakenings. There were a total of 35 minutes awake during the night. I think I was pretty groggy that next morning, so I'll go ahead and mark tired on this one. Okay, so this was my sleep report that was given after wearing the device for seven nights. You can see my comparison of sleep metrics like sleep onset, duration, heart rate, and respiration against the general population. My first night was a bit of a malfunction. I didn't have enough battery power to get through the whole night. Uh, afterwards, I did speak to a dream representative and they said it shouldn't affect my overall metrics because they do throw out outlier data. Uh, the rest of the nights were much more successful in using the technology. You can see there are calculated sleep deficit graphs over the seven days that I was using it. Uh, I'm still learning about these numbers and I wonder how much I'm having to catch up on sleep on the weekends if I'm getting a sleep deficit during the week or if I need as much sleep as the general population. Uh, definitely more to explore personally as I continue to use this device. Generally, the overall advice has been you need seven and a half to eight hours of sleep at night not to go into a sleep deficit. Overall, I do have a good sleep efficacy, but I could work on these suggestions here, uh, irregular wake times and lessening screen time at night before bed. I'm definitely guilty of both of those. 
getting up at different times during the morning, depending on what I have during that day, and then also uh, using my smartphone before I go to bed at night. Then they offer these nice programs to get started improving on your sleep. As we'll see, this device is not just a passive collector of data. It really takes you through these programs to educate you and improve your sleep. So right out the gate, you can choose between these programs of sleep restructuring, sleep basics, and rituals. So let's check out one of these right now to see the educational portion of the app. What's the biological clock? And how does it influence sleep? What's the ideal room temperature for falling asleep? What is the right time to exercise so that we sleep well at night? Well, if these kinds of questions are on your mind, well, you're in the right place. Welcome to our Sleep Basics program. Now here, over the next 10 days or so, we'll dive into the mechanisms influencing your sleep and the corresponding best practices for achieving the kind of high quality sleep that you Taking your morning coffee at the office, never missing a Sunday jog, enjoying some chamomile tea before bedtime. These kinds of routines are an important part of our daily lives. Now what we may not realize though is that these healthy To check the status of your headband, you have this little headband icon here that you can click on. We can see the Bluetooth, battery life, and Wi-Fi connections. It's important to note that both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turn off during the night so that your head is not subjected to these frequencies all night while you sleep. You can see a live EEG tracing to test the connection while you are wearing the device. The app does not readily offer raw EEG data, but there's definitely a researcher plan that you can ask Dream about to get access to that raw EEG data with the device if you're a researcher. If the EEG signal is not good, they do have a tutorial to show you how to improve the signal by wearing the headband more correctly. Another feature that I should mention is that they do have a nice body scan, breathing, and relaxation exercises that you can practice to further improve your sleep. You can record your relaxation sessions and naps as well as a full night of sleep. As far as price goes, their website currently shows for just shy of $500 to purchase the Dream 2. Now, while this may be more expensive than other EEG wearables, let's keep in mind that this device is specifically designed for sleep, has multiple biometrics, and has gained FDA class 2 approval after a rigorous review process, which is a huge deal. This is certainly not a toy and can legitimately be used as a clinical tool to help define and treat sleep disorders, either by consumers troubleshooting their own sleep problems or by providers that have clients in need of sleep data analysis and insomnia treatment. So I hope you enjoyed my review of the Dream 2 EEG wearable device. Highly recommend it if you have sleep problems or if you're a sleep researcher or a clinician. It's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Talk to you next week.